rev up your engines. Today I'm going to talk about five vehicles that can go 300,000 miles or more. Actually, just about any car can go 300,000 miles or more. If you don't mind spending all kinds of money putting another engine or a transmission in, spending a lot in repairs, I'm talking about ones that you don't have to spend a small fortune to make them get to 300,000 miles. Now I've actually seen three vehicles in my time that went over a million miles. One was an old Volvo P1800 sports car. One was a Ford F-150 pickup. And the other one was a Toyota Camry that went over a million miles. And to understand how this happened, sure, they had to be well-built vehicles. But in all three of those cases, those were vehicles that were driven mainly on the highway at highway speeds. Because realize, if you're going 65 miles an hour, all that wind is cooling the engine, the oil's lubricating correctly, you're not getting any kind of buildup in the engine because it's burning fast and getting rid of some of the impurities. So highway mileage is actually equivalent to about 10% of city stop and go driving. The absolute worst thing you can do for a car is to continuously shut it off and then later start it back up because most of the wear on your engine occurs during startup. When the top of the engine doesn't have the oil on it, the bottom does, and it's got to pump the pressure to the top. So you're going on the highway for 10 hours at 65 miles an hour, hardly getting anywhere at all. Taxi cabs in New York City that went more than a million miles, and you'd think, how can that be? Stop and go, stop and go. But from what I've read of those, they did not have the original engines and transmissions. They had a lot of repairs done. So it's not like it was somebody just bought a car and drove it a million miles in New York City stopping and going. That's a commercial thing and that's completely different. Now one reason people want a car that'll last 300,000 miles or more is because people drive more than they used to in the United States. It's a fact. Today, 2019, hey, you might be watching this video in the future and that'll be the past, but Americans average about 15,000 miles a year. And in the 60s and 70s, that used to be 12,000 miles a year. And of course, that's just an average. Many people drive 20 to 30,000 miles a year. Living in suburbia, the commutes are longer, everything's set up so you gotta drive to get somewhere. So people are driving more and more. In 10 years, so an average person will drive like 150,000 miles. Well, that's almost double what people were driving in the 60s and 70s. Cars eventually gonna start to wear out and you gotta decide, hey, when is it so worn out that's going to cost me more money to repair it than it's worth doing? Well, that's why I'm showing you five cars that can last 300,000 miles or more. And I'm talking about lasting out without having to engine replacement or transmission replacement. When it gets to that level, you got a car, say it's got 150,000, you find out you got to throw seven grand in an engine. Most people will say, Pfft. I'll go get something else and I won't fix it. Now, the first car that I'm going to pick that can go 300,000 miles or more is the venerable Toyota Corolla. There are millions and millions of them out there. Heck, my 94 Celica is basically a Toyota Corolla. And behind that, the 2007 Matrix, that's basically a Toyota Corolla too. I've had many of my own personal customers over the last 50 years get more than 300,000 miles on Toyota Corollas with the original engine and the original transmission. And it wasn't like the rest of the cars falling apart either. They're well made, and since there's millions of them out there, they're also much cheaper to repair. There's an insane aftermarket of decent parts that you can put on ones that are even 20, 30 years old these days. I even had a customer a few years ago. He bought a used Corolla from a friend of his for 500 bucks. And it had 200,000 miles on it. Shh. It was still going over 300,000 miles, and he's still driving the thing. What a deal. <laughs> Paid 500 bucks for a car, drove it another 100,000 miles, and didn't have to do the engine or the transmission over. Realize that when you go small, like a Toyota Corolla, there's less weight to pull itself, less weight to wear out the tires and the struts and everything else. A lot of times going a bit smaller is a good thing if you want long life in a vehicle. Now the next vehicle that can go 300,000 miles or more is the Honda Civic. The Civic is basically Honda's competition to the Corolla. Unlike the Corolla, there's millions of them out there. And since they're 
generally are a little bit zippier than the Corollas. A lot of kids like the Civics. They soup them up. They're strong engines. Honda's notorious for strong engines. I've had customers with Civics with well over 300,000 miles on them. School teacher and that's what she drives. And I've got uh, teenage kids that have souped up ones. Of course, they might not last 300,000 miles. They're either going to get wrapped around a telephone pole or they're going to blow the engines up by over rubbing them. But if you take care of a Civic, it can last a really really long time. Now the next vehicle that can last 300,000 miles or more is the grandpa's car. The old Crown Victoria. Yeah they don't make them anymore but they're simple old school technology. Pushrod V8s. Body on an actual frame. Those things can last a long time. And of course in this respect the Lincoln Town Car and the Mercury Grand Marquis, they can last a really long time if you take minimum care of them. That's why when they still made them, you'd see the Crown Vicks being used for police cars. They were solid, basic vehicles with frames. They could last a really long time. And if you didn't mind the relatively poor stop and go gas mileage, they were okay on the highway for gas mileage. Now the next vehicle that can last 300,000 miles or more might surprise you. The Mazda Miata. A little bitty Mazda sports car. I remember years before the Miatas were even built, a lot of people would say, Scotty, why doesn't somebody figure out how to get a British sports car and put a Japanese engine in it? Well, Mazda pretty much took that idea and made the Mazda Miata, a completely Japanese made car with a Japanese engine that ran circles around the English sports cars in terms of the fun factor that they always started up, they got good gas mods, they were fun to drive and they didn't break down all the time like the British sports cars did. And of course they're still making the 2010 and the 2016 Miatas. Hey they got one of the highest satisfaction ratings by the owners who bought them and drove them around. They're fun little cars. That said if you want to get one certainly get the standard transmissions. Because the automatic transmission ones especially the older ones could barely get out of their own way. And those automatic transmissions would break down as they got older where the standard transmission hey they can just keep going and going and going they're so much simpler hey if you're into buying a used sports car that'd be the one I tell you to buy because I've had customers buy one that had 150,000 miles paid a thousand twelve hundred dollars for them and drove them for years and were pretty happy with it and rarely would I tell somebody to buy a used sports car but the Miata probably the best pick of a used sports car if you're thinking about long life now the last vehicle that you can buy which you can get 300,000 miles or more as far as I'm concerned, is the Ford F-150 pickup line. Post-World War II, Ford really has run the pickups, the F-150 series, the top of the line for serious pickup truck drivers. Of course, they got a whole range of options in them, but really, if you want to go 300,000 miles or more on one of those, get yourself the good, solid V8 engine. Now, the only thing that I've got against them is the automatic transmission is the weakest link. I've had customers get 400,000 miles or more on an F-150. But usually by then, they're on their second automatic transmission. Ford has a pretty good system where they have factory remanufactured transmissions that are pretty good that you can have put in. So if you've got one that's got 250,000 miles and the tranny goes out, my advice is put in one of the Ford remanufactured automatic transmissions and go on your merry way for years and years. Now normally when I have a customer with real high mileage, the transmission goes out, I say, I'll just get rid of it, it's not worth it. But on those F-150s, hey, the engine and body's still in good shape. You might as well as put a transmission in it if you want a truck like that to drive around. I would never ever tell somebody with a Chrysler pickup truck to put a transmission in it if the vehicle had 200,000 miles on it. Odds are being a Chrysler by then the whole vehicle would be falling apart and it'd be no sense to spend all that money putting a transmission in it. So if you want to keep your vehicles 300,000 miles or more, now you know five of them that have stood the test of time and can do just that. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.